here is introduction to equations. Um, so it says an algebraic expression is something that doesn't have an equal sign, so something like 3x minus 5, but an algebraic equation has an equal sign. Um, so you're often going to have to undo operations by getting things to the other side. So we kind of previewed that last time. So if you have like x plus 10, you're reading it as some number added to 10 gives me 21. So the number that would be added to 10 would be 11, right? So basically, in order to undo that operation, you would subtract 10, subtract 10. Be 9 to number 1? No. Oh, for the yes, for the first one. So number 1, uh, yes, Peter is correct. X would be 9. Now, can you guys see that without doing the operations? Can you say 2 times some number? And then I subtract 18, and I'm going to get 0. So what you're doing in your head is you're solving an equation. You're, you're thinking backward. You're saying, okay, well, that means 2x has to equal 18. So what did you do in your head? You added 18 to both sides, right? So if you have 2x equals 18, so now you're saying 2 times some number gives me 18. So what are you doing in your head? You're dividing by 2, right? So we divide by 2, divide by 2, and we get x equals 9. All right, so the next one, I have 3x plus 5 equals 14. So can you guys see what 3x would have to be? 3x would have to total 9, right? Do you guys see? You have to subtract the 5, subtract the 5. So 3x equals 9. Ryan, Will. So if I divide by 3. So x would be 3. Exactly. So we're doing the opposite operation. So when it says 3 times a number equals 9, we take that 9 and we divide by 3. We're undoing the 3 times. All right, so the next one's a little bit harder. But if you just think about it, 10 minus some number gives you 7. It's very easy, right? 10 yeah. minus what number? But there's got to be caps in there. Isn't there? It's, I think it's hard to do with algebra sometimes when you get to this point. Like 10 minus a number equals 7. It's going to be 3. You guys all know that it's 3, right? But people will make mistakes because we're going to subtract the 10, subtract the 10, and you get negative x equals negative 3. A lot of people will forget the negative. And they'll say, oh, x equals negative 3. But we know it's not x equals negative 3. We know that 10 minus some number equals 7. We know it should be 3, right? So what we have is negative x equals negative 3. Negative x is the same as negative 1x. So we have negative 1x equals negative 3. So we're going to divide out by negative 1, divide out by negative 1, so we get x equals positive 3, which we knew it was, right? So a lot of times if you're here, you can just go straight to here without doing the steps below it. But we should get in the habit of writing steps, right? All right, so the next one. A little bit harder to do in our head now, isn't it? So we're going to subtract the 13, subtract the 13. So we have negative 2x equals 4. And then we divide by negative 2, divide by negative 2, because we're saying negative 2 times something equals 4. So we get x equals negative 2. So that's our answer. And you can always check if you aren't sure, just plug it back in, right? We've done that where we plug things in. So if I had 13 minus 2 times negative 2 equals 17, we're seeing if it's equal to 17, right? We're not sure. What's negative 2 times negative 2? Four, right? So we do 13 plus 4 equals 17. That works. Okay, so you can always check if you're not sure. All right, do you understand this? How comfortable are you with solving equations? Has everybody seen solving equations before? Okay, that's good. All right, so the next one. So if we have 1 half x minus 7 equals 11. So half of a number minus 7 equals 11. What does half of that number have to equal? Add the 7 over. So half of some number has to equal 18, right? So don't get confused. Don't think, oh, I'm going to have it. I'm going to get 9. It's going to be what answer? 36. It's going to be 36, right? Because you're saying half of some number gives you 18. Half of what number? Half of 36, right? So what we do is if we're getting rid of a 1 half, we end up multiplying by 2. In other words, 2 over 1, the reciprocal. So when we multiply by 2 over 1, we get x equals 18 times 2, so we get 36. So the next one. So now I have x's on both sides. Okay. So in pre-algebra, you probably only had an x like on one side mostly, maybe on both sides. Um, but we're going to get a lot harder. Like This is kind of the first thing with equations. Then we're going to have equations that have lots of fractions. Wait. 
are going to have decimals. Don't you put a line and an equal sign? Yeah, so I kind of, I always say that I think and of this as a brick wall. And we're not going to cross the brick wall until everything's simplified on both sides. Yeah, you could take the 3x and subtract from both sides. Or I usually take the negative, like I would make it so that my final answer is positive. So I would subtract 2x from both sides. So I get a positive 1x, which I can just write as x. So I have x minus 6 equals 10. Okay, and then I'm going to add the 6 over. So I get x equals 16, right? Because a number minus 6 giving you 10, it, that means that the number has to be 16. Okay, do you guys get this? Okay. All right, so on this next one, sometimes you have to simplify. So what I was saying, like Peter was talking about a brick wall, like we can't cross the brick wall until we've simplified everything on this side and everything on this side. So the right side's good. The right side, we just have 10. But the left side, we need to simplify things down, just like we did earlier with simplifying expressions. Okay, so some of you guys didn't do so hot on that, like, thing that was going to be a quiz, and then I ended up letting you guys take it home. Uh, I have those to pass back, too. I need to pass those back. Um, you had trouble with negatives in particular on the quiz, okay? So when I take the 2 times 3 and I take the 2 times negative x, I get 6 minus 2x two plus, two. plus 2 on the end, exactly, equals 10. And I look and I think about this as being a brick wall, and I'm like, ooh, I still haven't totally simplified the left-hand side. Because if I simplify the left-hand side, I want to combine all of my like terms, okay? So I'm going to combine my 6 and my 2. Now, this is where my dyslexic students have a hard time. When you combine the 6 and the 2, the sign that's in front of 6 is a positive. So if you need to write that in, that's fine. So we have positive 6 plus 2. Uh-huh, so we get 8 minus 2x equals 10. You could. Um, so you want to see it as negative 2x plus 8 equals 10? Sure. If you want to write it in front, that's fine. All right, so now we have everything simplified on both sides. So we want to start combining, start moving things over, and so on. So I want to subtract the x over, or not the x, the negative, the 8 over. I want to subtract that 8 over. Because the sign in front of it was a plus before, right? So I do the opposite sign. So when I do that, I get negative 2x equals 2. Yep. So negative 2 times some number gives you 2. What's the number? Negative 1, right? So that's our answer. All right, so the next one still looks a little bit more complicated. We're going to continue to make these harder and harder. So we started out with the basics. We're getting a little bit more difficult. And we'll practice this all day long. All right, so here's our brick wall. We're not going to cross it until we simplify both sides completely. So we're going to have 4x minus 4 plus 8 equals 3x plus 12 minus 10. So let me show you where a lot of my students mess up. So don't write this. Just everybody look at the board. I have a lot of students that do this. Okay, what's wrong with that? Yeah, so an equation is like a teeter-totter, right? A seesaw, whatever you guys call it. I called it a teeter-totter. Uh, and if you're adding 4 to one of the sides, you have to keep things balanced by adding 4 to the other side. Okay, do you guys see how this is on the same side as the brick wall? That's not good. You've now just added 8 to the left-hand side. And so now it's like... Your teeter-totter looks like this. <laughs> like it's heavier, right, on the left side. Okay, so you cannot do that. You can't just add 4 to both sides. That's why I always say simplify as much as possible on both sides. So we're just treating the left-hand side as one big expression, and now I have negative 4 plus 8, and I just combine them, just like normal. So I get 4x, negative 4 plus 8 is plus 4. And then same thing on the other side. I have positive 12 minus 10. So positive 12 minus 10 is going to be plus 2. So I get 3x plus 2. Now I have simplified everything completely on both of the individual sides. Okay. Now I want to get my x's together. So that's where I was saying it doesn't matter what you do. You can subtract 4x to both sides. You can subtract 3x. 
which one would I choose? I would subtract 3x from both sides, okay? Wake up. <laughs> There's an alarm going off. All right, so we're going to subtract 3x from both sides. Why did I choose to subtract 3x instead of 4x? Yeah, I prefer it not to be negative, okay? It's just one more step at the end. So I have 4x minus 3x gives me 1x, or x, plus 4 equals 2. Now, some people like to draw like little lines and stuff. If you like to draw lines, go for it. So we're saying a number plus 4 gives you 2. Can you guys do it at that point? A number plus 4 gives you 2. Yeah, subtract 4, subtract 4, and yes, you do get x equals negative 2. That's our answer. Okay, so what's going to be important for you as all, all of you are freshmen? You are becoming, uh, you know, good math students. We're going to make sure that we're doing things appropriately. The important thing is to show your work nicely. And it doesn't seem like a big thing right now because I know that when you guys got to steps like this, 1 half x equals 18, some of you guys were like, oh, it's 36. That's fine, but we need to get in the habit of showing our work because eventually it's not going to be this easy, right? When you're in classes like pre-calculus and so on, right? You want to know how to, how to solve these things and you need to know how to show your work, okay? Because it can be a pain if you don't learn how to show your work early. All right, like next one. Do you guys want to try these ones first? Try number 9 and 10? All right, so go ahead and try number 9 and 10. All right, so the first thing is that 1 half, so don't let the fraction scare you, right? If you have 1 half and it's multiplied by 2x minus 4, we're just going to distribute our 1 half in. So 1 half of 2x is going to be 1x. Peter, are you with me? So I get x. 1 half times negative 4 is negative 2. I still have a plus 5. And then I distribute my 2, and I get 2x plus 14 minus 3. Okay, so if you got that step, maybe give yourself a little check or something. You're like, okay, I got that step. Feel good about that. All right, so now this is where we're just simplifying our expressions, just like we did before. So we have an expression, x minus 2 uh, plus 5, and we have an expression, 2x plus 14 minus 3. So we combine our like terms. So over on the left-hand side, I'm going to combine my negative 2 and my positive 5. So negative 2 plus 5 is going to be positive 3. So I'm going to have x plus 3. And over here, I'm going to combine my positive 14 and my minus 3. So if I have 14 and I subtract out 3, I get 11. So I'm going to have 2x plus 11 there. Okay, so now I've totally simplified things on the left-hand side, and I've totally simplified things on the right-hand side. So this is where, in order to combine terms now, I have to go on opposite sides of the equation. So this is where we undo the operations, okay? So we're like, okay, I want to get all my x's together. Well, if I'm going to get all my x's together, I need to subtract x and subtract x from both sides of the brick wall, okay? So when I do that, oops, minus x, minus x, I get a 3 left on the left-hand side. I have 2x minus x. Some people write 2 there. Don't write that. 2x minus 1x is what we're thinking. So we get 1x plus 11. So those of you that had 14, you were very, very close but we want to get the 11 now to the other side. So once you get your like x's, they're on, let's say they're on the right hand side in this case, right? Then get your numbers on the other side because we always want to have like x equals something. So I subtract 11, subtract 11. So I get negative 8 equals 1x or x. So negative 8 should be the answer. I don't think I saw a negative 8. I saw an 8. Oh, two of you guys got it. Anybody else? Ryan got it? All right, three of you. A fourth of the class. Well, let's do better on this one. Let's see if we can get this one. This one's not as hard. All right, so be an active note taker. Remember, I always say this. So do the problem along with me and kind of look up and say, okay, I got that same line. I got that same line. I feel good about this, okay? Yes. So do the problem with me. So we're multiplying the 4n. So when we do that, we get 4x minus 48 equals 5x minus 48. Hmm. 
All right, so now I have everything simplified on the left-hand side and the right-hand side. I want to now go on the opposite side of the equation sign, right? So let's take our x's and get them on one side. So what should we subtract? Five. You can subtract the 5x or the 4x. No, yeah, let's do the 4x so we don't have negatives, right? So when I do that, I get x minus 48, and it equals negative 48. So don't forget that sign. So I'm going to now add 48 to both sides because I want to get the x by itself. So I add 48, add 48. So I get x equals what? Zero. Negative 48 plus 48, right? Zero. That is an answer. Don't think that when you get zero that it's no solution. I Some thought it was undefined. It does not. Um, the undefined ones, which we'll talk about, is when you get like zero equals 10 or zero equals 2. Or something no, like that. Negative 2 equals 3. No, like, you could have 0 equals negative 5. That's not bigger than what it is. But when no, you get, like, 0 no. equal to something other than 0, does that make sense? Okay. Like, 0 equals 8. 0 isn't equal to 8. Those are not the same numbers. Does that make sense? But x can equal 0. That's allowed. All right, so this next one, we have fractions. All right, so we are going to add 7 to both sides. Colin, you with me? So add 7. Add 7. Okay. So when you add 7 to both sides, we get 3 fourths x equals 12. So that's where it's a little bit harder to do in your head, right? 3 fourths of some number gives me 12. Hmm. Can you guys do it in your head? 3 fourths of some number gives you 12. No? <laughs> Three-fourths of some number gives you 12. Okay, so the way that we get rid of a three-fourths is you could do it in two separate steps. You can multiply by four on both sides and then divide by three. I usually do it all together. So I multiply by the reciprocal. So what's our reciprocal? I don't know why. Reciprocal. <laughs> reciprocal. Yeah, it's four over three. So we're going to multiply by four over three on both sides. Okay, and does that make sense? Why do we do that? Because now we have 12 over 12 over here. And 12 over 12 is 1. So we have 1x, which is what we want. So that's why we do that. So we get x equals, and we have 12 over 1 times 4 over 3. So we can reduce 12 and 3, reduce out to 4 and 1. So we get x equals 16. So 16 is our answer. Could you do it other ways? Sure. Some people like to write 3 fourths as a decimal. What is 3 fourths as a decimal? 0. 0.75. And then you can divide 12 by 0. 0.75. Personally, I don't like dividing with decimals by hand. I don't like that. If you had a calculator, it's pretty easy, right? <laughs> yeah, super easy if you have a calculator. Do you think I'm always going to give you a calculator? No. Nope. Right I'm here, mean. Mean Mrs. Cox. <laughs> All right, so next one. So negative 2 thirds x plus 1 equals 5. So do you notice how we're always like getting the thing that's furthest away from the x to the other side first? So that plus 1 is what's going to go over first. So we're going to subtract 1 and subtract 1. So when we do that, we get negative 2 thirds x equals 4. So you can get rid of the negative by <coughs> dividing by negative 1, and then you'd have 2 thirds of x equals negative 4. But I kind of do it all at once. What could I multiply on both sides by? to do this all together. What do you think? What's the reciprocal of negative 2 thirds? And just 3 over 2? What if I have 3 over 2? Then I get negative 6 over 6. Then I still have negative 1x. So there's an easy way. What can I multiply by that gets rid of the negative as well? Negative 3? Yeah, negative 3 over 2, right? So let's do that. So we're going to multiply by negative 3 over 2. So I get x equals 4 times negative 3 over 2. So if you need to write it as 4 over 1 times negative 3 over 2, you can. You can reduce first, or you can multiply top and bottom. You get negative 12 over 2, which is negative um, 6. All right. 
right, so we're going to do lots of these problems. Lots of them, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Students used to have a Keurig machine. Do you guys still have a Keurig? They used to be by the, uh, by the um, study one, hall copier. I saw that there's one near our printer. Yeah, that's for you guys. You just got to bring yeah, in K cups. All right, so it says, remember, numbers are not always nice. So look at these numbers. Wasn't that nice? I had negative 8. I had 0. Negative 6. 16. Those are such nice numbers. And that's how a lot of Algebra 1 pre-algebra books are. It's like you look in the back of the book, and it's like x equals 2. And so, Wait, so and nice. Book, does it give you the answers in the back? Yeah. yeah. To the odds, yeah. Yeah, yeah. you guys can use a book. Yeah, you guys have a book. All right, so do you think that I'm always going to give you nice numbers? Probably not. Back to this mean Mrs. Cox thing. Right, you're going to have numbers that are going to look like 11 over 9, negative 31 over 7. You're going to have weird numbers, right? We just need to get used to having weird numbers. I'll just show you, I, after this, I'll show you, a, I have a PowerPoint. I call it math fails in real life. Have you guys ever seen things like where um, you're just like, wow, people don't know math in the real world? I'll show you pictures of those. It's funny. All right, so anyway, numbers are not always nice. So if you have a fraction, leave it as a reduced fraction, Peter. Uh, you do not need to change it into a mixed number. So don't write things as 1 and 3 fourths. Write it as 7 fourths, right? All right, so here we go. So I have 7x minus 10 equals 9x minus 15. So I have everything simplified on each side. So let's subtract our 7x, subtract our 7x. When we do that, we get negative 10 equals 2x minus 15. All right, we want to get the x's by itself. So we're going to add 15, add 15. So when we do that, we get 2x on the right-hand side. What do we have on the left? Five. We have positive 5, right? Negative 10 plus 15. And then I divide by 2. Divide by 2, so I get x equals 5 over 2. So I would leave it like that. You don't have to write it as a decimal or anything. Do you guys know the decimal? Put a bonus. We could. It'd be 2.5, right? So I think on the, on the homework I say leave it as a reduced fraction. All right, you do not have to write that as 2 and 1 half. I actually prefer 5 over 2. Do you guys all know that 5 over 2 is, like, bigger than 2? You know that, right? You don't have to write it as a mixed number. All right, so let's try the next one. So do it along with me. Be an active note taker. So we're distributing the 4 first. When we do that, we get 12 minus 4x plus 7 equals, distribute the 5, 5 times 2 is 10, 5 times 3x is 15x. So our first line should be 12 minus 4x plus 7 equals 10 plus 15x. And we want to combine our like terms. So this is where I said my dyslexic students have a hard time when it's like 12 minus. So if you want to write a little plus in front of it, that helps. We have positive 12 and positive 7. So those combine to be 19. So it doesn't matter if you put the negative 4x and then do plus 19, or if you write 19 minus 4x, either way. So Brian was saying he liked it when the, when the uh, variables were out front. So we'll put them in the front. So negative 4x plus 19 equals 15x plus 10. All right, now we want to get our x's to be positive if possible. It doesn't have to be. But what would you do? Would you add 4x or would you subtract 15x? Add the 4x over, right? Because when we do that, that gives us a positive 19x. So we get 19x plus 10 equals 19. We're almost there. Next step, what do I do? Subtract. Yeah, subtract 10. So we get 9 equals 19x. And then we divide by 19. Divide by 19. So we get x equals 9 over 19. That is our answer. Sure. You are. Play a game. You go play a game. Not yet, though. Yes. Yeah, you're fine. Go ahead. Okay, yeah, it's fine. All right, 15. 
So we're going to distribute our 3 fourths n. So we're going to have 3 fourths, 3 fourths. So we have 3 fourths x. And then off to the side, so when I was in school, I always did like a little area for scratch work. Because, you know, sometimes it helps to kind of write like 3 fourths times negative 8 off to the side. So you can reduce it down. When we do that, we'd have negative 24 over 4, which is negative 6, right? So if you kind of do that off to the side, it helps sometimes. Plus 9 equals 10. All right, is it fully simplified on the left-hand side? What do I need to do still? Yeah, I need to add my common, my like terms, right? So I have negative 6 plus 9. So I get 3 fourths x plus 3 equals 10. We subtract 3, subtract 3. So we have 3 fourths x equals 7. All right, usually people feel pretty good up to there. Do you guys remember what we did when we had 3 fourths x? Yeah, we're going to multiply by 4 over 3. And we don't panic when we get something that isn't nice. So what do we get as our answer? Twenty-eight over three. And you can leave it like that. So you don't have to write it as a mixed number. If you did write it as a mixed number, what would it be? Nine. Nine and. Nine and one third, right? Nine and one third. So you could write it as a mixed number, but I actually prefer the twenty-eight over three. All right, so go ahead and try 16. And try 16. If you can do this one, you can do anything. The key to this is thinking this is negative 1 on the outside, and you're distributing that negative 1 in. So go ahead and try that one. So I told you the key was to distribute that negative 1 first, right? So we're thinking of that negative on the outside as a negative 1. So I'm going to have 8 minus 7 plus x. Did you guys all have plus x there? Yep. All right, good. And then we distribute the 3, so we get 3x plus 30. And we combine our like terms. So it's a little tricky because we have positive 8, negative 7, and positive 3 here. What do we get? 4. So we have x plus 4 equals 3x plus 30. We subtract the x, subtract the x, so we get 4 equals 2x plus 30. All right, we want to get everything that's not an x on the other side, so we're going to subtract 30, subtract 30. So 4 minus 30, what's that? Negative 26. So when we divide by 2, we get x equals negative 13. That is the answer. Yep. All right. You may go on break and then come back, and we will finish this up. Oh. So number 17, very similar. So we're going to distribute the 3. So simplify everything on the right-hand side. So we get 3x minus 9, and it's equal to 3 fourths x. So this time it's a little bit strange because as, as we're combining our x's, right, we have fractions. So I'm going to subtract. Let's say we subtract the 3 fourths x over. That means I'm left with a 0 on the left-hand side, which is fine. So in that case, maybe it was better to subtract 3 over, right? So you did 3 over 4? So we need to find what 3 minus 3 fourths is. So I think many of you guys will know what that is as a mixed number. What is it as a mixed number? 2 and 1 fourth, right? So if I was getting the improper form, I could take that 2 and 1 fourth and change it. 2 times 4 plus 1 gives you 9 over 4. Um, or you can change the 3 to 9, or not 9, <laughs> to uh, 12 over 4 minus 3 over 4, and that's how we're getting 9 over 4, right? So we have 9 over 4 
x minus 9. But now we've kind of messed it up because now we have x's and the number on one side. Okay, so what could we do now? How do add I get them? Yeah, just add 9 to both sides. So now we have 9 equals 9 fourths x. And our final step is to get rid of that 9 fourths. So we're going to multiply by 4 over 9 and multiply by 4 over 9. So what do we get for x? What's well, 4 over 9 times 9 over 1? Close, not that. There's still that 4, right? So we're going to get 4. So x equals 4 is the solution. All right, so there is actually an easier way of doing that. We, we can clear fractions. I'm not going to teach you guys that until uh, the next section. So uh, we're just going to keep doing it this way for now. All right, so we have x's. So I have x over 3. Hmm. Oh, boy. You could do this a couple different ways. So you can think of this as 1 third x and do the same thing that you just did. Or you can say, oh, I have x divided by 3. So how do I get rid of something that's divided by 3? Multiply I by three. Multiply by 3. So you can multiply the 3 over. And that's fine, but when you do that, make sure you write it as x equals 3 times x plus 4 like that. So 3 times the quantity of x plus 4. So notice how I put parentheses around that. I'm multiplying the entire side by 3. Did you get that? Yeah. yeah. All right, so I distribute my 3 in. So I get 3x plus 12. And I subtract my, either subtract your 3x or your x. Now, in this case, maybe I don't want it to be, like, I can deal with negatives. So what would be the convenience of subtracting 3x from both sides? Oh, you don't have to add the Then you don't have to take the 12 and subtract it over, right? So if you subtract your 3x over, then at least you have, like, x's on one side, numbers on the other side. So we're good. So we're going to have negative 2x equals 12, like that. So it's, it's up to you. You could... You could subtract the x over, but then you have like x's and numbers on one side and zero on the left hand side, and then go from there. It's up to you. All right, so if negative 2 times the number equals 12, what's the number? Negative 6, right? So we get x equals negative 6 is our answer. All right, so that's all of our equations. That's about as hard as they get there. So we did some pretty difficult ones. Well, they are going to get harder with uh, fractions and decimals. So you're just like throwing pencils at each other. Really, really mature, guys. All right, so checking solutions. So it says determine whether 2 or negative 3 are solutions to the following equations. Okay, so have you guys done this before where you just plug it in and you see if it's true or false? That's yeah. what we're doing. So we're going to plug in both 2 and 3 to both of these equations. So let's say I'm checking 2. When I check 2, I'm plugging 2 in for x, so I have 2 squared minus 4 times 2, and I'm seeing if it's equal to negative 4. So notice how I put a little question mark over. I'm not really sure if it's equal to it, so I just want to put, is this equal to negative 4 or not? And then I just simplify both sides of the expression, or the equation. So I'm going to have 2 squared is 4, minus 4 times 2 is 8, 4 minus 8, is that equal to negative 4? So we're good. So 2 is a solution. All right, so let's say we check negative 3. Just because 2 works doesn't mean that negative 3 won't work. Sometimes both of them are solutions. So if I check negative 3, I'm going to have negative 3 squared minus 4 times negative 3. I want to see if that's equal to negative 4. So sometimes uh, when you have like x squared equations, then you can have more than one answer. If it's just an x equation, like there's no x squared or anything, then you're only going to have one solution most likely. Or zero or infinitely many, which we'll talk about in a sec. Okay, so if I have negative 3 times itself, negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. A lot of you guys missed that on your quiz. You put negative 9. So we have 9. Negative 4 times negative 3 is 12. Is 9 plus 12, is that equal to negative 4? No. 21 does not equal negative 4, right? So negative 3 is not a solution. So then let's try the next one. So let's check 2. Can you guys kind of do it in your head? Can you check 2 in your head? When you plug 2 in, do we get 4 on the other side? So 2 squared is... 
4 minus 5. Is that equal to 4? No, negative 1 is not equal to 4, so it does not work. All right, do we think negative 3 is going to work? Can you guys use, plug it in in your head? Yeah. Yeah, negative 3 squared is 9, right? Minus 5. 9 minus 5 does equal 4, so we're good there. So negative 3 is a solution. And 2 is not a solution. So like I said, you could have both of them being a solution just because this is a... Um, x squared equation. x squared can have more than one. All right, I know you guys are getting tired. This is a long, long lesson. There's lots of equations. All right, last type of equation. And this is fun. <laughs> I'm sure. All right, we are. We can do the game in just a little bit. You guys are antsy. All right, so it says if you are solving an equation and you end up getting 0 equals 0 or 7 equals 7, etc. So if I get 214 equals 214, Negative 3 equals negative 3. Is that true? Negative 3 is equal to negative 3, right? 0 is equal to 0. It's always true. So basically, it doesn't matter what you would have plugged in for x. Both sides of the equation would have simplified down to a true statement in the end. 0 equals 0. 3 equals 3. So every single number that you plug in for x would have worked. Okay? The solution then would be all real numbers. So on this first one, here's an example. So if I distribute my 4, I get 4x minus 12 plus 11. I'm, uh, I have 4x minus 1 on the other side. Do you see how this side makes 4x minus 1 equals 4x minus 1? When you see that they're exactly the same on both sides, that's when you can stop. You can be like, oh, I get it. No matter what I plug in for x makes this true. But you could add 1, add 1. You'd have 4x equals 4x, subtract 4x, subtract 4x. You'd end up getting 0 equals 0, right, if you subtract 4x and subtract 4x from both sides. When you get 0 equals 0 or 3x, or 3 equals 3 or even 4x minus 1 equals 4x minus 1, we write all real numbers. It doesn't matter what we plug in. So you guys can test it. So Max, go ahead and plug 5 in to the equation. And Maya, plug in 1, or let's plug in 3 into the equation. And Caitlin, plug in 0 into the equation. 300 million. <laughs> 300 million 667 equals 300 million Wow, you plugged in a big number. But it's true, right? It doesn't matter what you plug in. You get like 0 equals 0, 1 equals 1 in the end. Do you guys see? Okay. So if you're solving an equation, you end up getting something like 0 equals 5. Is 0 equal to 5? No. no, zero of something is not equal to five of something. If you went down to Mrs. Webster's office and you went to Candyland and you were like, oh, Max got zero and AJ got five pieces of candy. Is that the same? No. <laughs> like, Max is sad. He didn't get any candy, right? Um, so zero is not equal to five. Negative one is not equal to two. So if you get something like that, there is no way that that's possibly true. So no matter what you would have plugged in, you get a false statement in the end. So this means that it's no solution. Or do you guys know the symbol? What's the symbol for a no solution? Just write no solution. It's like that. It's like a zero with a little line through it. That's why it drives math teachers crazy when people put a zero with a line through it. A lot of scientists will do this. Dr. Vesper and Mrs. Adams do that. It drives me nuts. Because in math, that is not zero. That is the empty set. So it's read as the empty set. Which means there are no answers. So an example of this would be if I distribute my 5n, I get 5x minus 30 plus 7 equals 5x plus 30. So we get 5x minus 23 when we combine our like terms equals 5x plus 30. And when you subtract 5x from both sides, we run into a problem. We get negative 23 equals 30. That cannot possibly happen. So that means that this is no solution. So when that happens, when you get a number equaling another number that it's not equal to, then it's no solution. But if you get a number equals itself, 7 equals 7, then it's all real numbers. Does that make sense? All right.